Hi, it's me, Annalisa Boyd. I'm an Orthodox Christian wife, mom to eight kids, bread baker, candy maker, self-proclaimed doula, accidental midwife, and the author of The Ascetic Lives of Mothers, Hear Me, and Special Agents of Christ, all through Ancient Faith Publishing. Sorry, I just have to sing that last part. It's just more fun. Okay, so today I'm not actually going to like give any like advice or insight or anything like that. But one of the things I say at my opening is that I am a self-proclaimed doula and accidental midwife. So I thought I would share a little bit about that because I, I'm a birth junkie. I really love childbirth, home birth, hospital birth. I'll, I'll go to those two and but I just love birth. There's something just so amazing about being able to participate with a woman, with a family, um, as they are giving birth. It is, it's, it's beautiful. So my first experience at a birth was when I was 18 years old. Um, my best friend in high school needed a birth coach. And so I took up the, the job and got to help her have her first baby. And that was just incredible. I got to rub her back for 12 hours, which also is incredible. And it was very sore. She was wondering after she gave birth, why she had this big red spot on her back. And I reminded her that that was the only thing that made her feel better. So that was really fun. I've had the wonderful pleasure, blessing opportunity to be at 11 births so far. And other than my births, so I got so 14 all together, but had this amazing opportunity in May 2000 something. I can't remember which 2000 it was, but it was May, what? It was May 10th <laughs> and I had the opportunity to be at a home birth. My friend gave me a call uh, I was planning to go kind of as her doula. I had asked my husband at the beginning, and she had decided to have an unassisted home birth. That means that there wasn't going to be a midwife. It was just going to be pretty much her husband and any support people that she decided to have. And she, I, initially my husband said, no, not if there's not a midwife there. And then maybe a couple months later, I brought up her pregnancy again. And he said, well, you're going to be there, right? to help her. And I'm like, okay, last time you said that I couldn't be there. I'm so confused, but I wasn't going to ask again. He said I could be there. So that was the plan. And the morning, uh, five 30 in the morning on May 10th, whatever year it was, he's eight years old now. I can't do the math right now. So that'd be 2007. <gasps> I did the math. I'm so excited. So May 10th, 2007, he uh, my friend gave me a call at 5.30 in the morning and said, I think I'm in labor. And I said, well, what makes you think you're in labor? And she said, well, I took a shower and the contractions are still coming. And I got to go. And she hung up the phone and I said, okay, she's in labor. So I woke up my husband because we had our three daughters at that point. I woke up my husband and let him know I was going to be going and asked him to pray. And I got in my car and she didn't leave, live very far away. So I didn't have far to go. But I did notice that that particular mo morning, normally when I go to a birth, it's, it's like Christmas. It's like butterflies in the stomach. It's so exciting. But this particular time, I just felt this incredible peace. And I was like, this is really neat. This is, I don't even know what this is. This is wonderful. So I just felt very peaceful. And when I got to her home, it was just her. Her son was sleeping in the in the back bedroom. And her husband hadn't got, gotten there yet. He went to work very early. And he was a manager. So he knew that she was in labor. But he had to wait for another manager to get there before he could leave the store. And so he was frantically calling and everything. And so it was just her and me. And she was praying in between contractions where, where you, there weren't very many breaks between her contractions. But when there were, she was praying and I was praying. And it was just so incredibly peaceful. Well, she was progressing very quickly. And once I realized that we were, it looked like we were getting down to the wire and I was still the only one there, I decided to call my godmother, who was a Red Cross instructor. She had had her babies at home and she had delivered a number of 
babies on accident and on purpose. And she also lived in our little community. And so I gave her a call and said, okay, I've never delivered a baby before, but you have, can you come over? And she said, what's the address? And I looked at my friend and they said, what's the address? And she looked at me and said, ah, and so I said, okay, well, like she's not really available right now to tell me the address. So I had to describe where she was and I'm holding this compress, you know, hot compress in the exit route. And she is trying not to push because her husband still isn't here. I've, I called him to say, okay, I really think, think you really need to come. And he's like, I'm waiting for another manager. I'm really trying to get out of here. And I'm realizing this is it. And she's bearing down. Uh, don't push, don't push, don't push, is what she's saying. I'm not saying anything. Uh, don't push, don't push, don't push, because she's trying to wait for her husband to get there. And I'm calmly, with this amazing, wonderful piece that I'm experiencing, going over to her birth kit and getting the things that I think I'll need. I don't know. I've never delivered a baby before. That wasn't supposed to be my job. And I came back over and this baby is coming and he comes out. I checked or his head comes out and I check to see if there's an umbilical cord because I know you're supposed to do that. I don't know exactly what I would have done had there been an umbilical cord wrapped around his neck at that time. I know now what to do, but I didn't then. And this baby comes out. Two minutes later, my wonderful godmother walks in the door and the first thing she did was put on gloves. And I thought, oh, that would have been a good idea. Didn't even cross my mind. So we were able to deliver or, you know, clamp and cut the umbilical cord and deliver the placenta and get her all cleaned up and the mess around all cleaned up right before her husband got there. And there's this beautiful, glowing new mama to her second son. And, and it was just beautiful. He was bummed out that he couldn't be there, but it was quite the, quite the welcome when he came in and beheld his wife and son, 10 pound, two ounce son. She has big babies. Her first one was 10 two, second was 10 two, Third one was 10. Fourth one was a very small 8, 14, I believe. And then the third one, closest we can get is probably he was 11 and a half pounds. But from her first contraction to the delivery was an hour and 40 minutes. And we were able to get her cleaned up. Her mom arrived. Everybody was shocked that everything had happened that fast. It was really a blessing that she had planned to do a, a home birth and had, had the supplies because there was no way that we would have gotten to the hospital in time. So that, that was a huge blessing. So I got home before my husband even had to leave for work. It just worked out very nicely. She planned well. And I told him I delivered a baby. And he said, the moment you told me that she was in labor, I knew you were going to deliver that baby. And I said, thank you so much for not telling me because I would have freaked out. Well, fast forward a couple years. You'd think that was the end of the story, but it's not. Fast forward a couple years and I got to be present for the delivery of her fourth baby. And... It was the same thing. I woke up that morning. We had plans to go and, and visit for the day and just hang out. Didn't think the baby was coming that day, but I had that same peace. And so I felt like I needed to be prepared for whatever was going to come. And sure enough, that baby came that evening and her husband and I both got to be there and help deliver that baby and I have to say, she was actually hysterical that time because she didn't believe she was really in labor. So she would bear down, oh, oh, push, 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 and then say, I really don't think I'm in labor. I don't really think this is the real thing. And her husband and I would were both like, I'm not sure what just happened. It was kind of like a light switch. So the light switch would go on. She'd have a contraction and really feel it. And then the light switch went off. Yeah, this just doesn't feel like it's really labor. The baby was descending. Everything was happening, but she was kind of in denial. But it was really, really fun. So that's me. I'm a, I'm a birth junkie. I love, love birth. 
and babies and all of that. So that was my story. Thought I'd share. Have a fantastic day and keep working out your salvation one mommy moment at a time. Pray for me. Okay. Bye.